Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my very first ever video tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is a duplicate, uh, well the, actually the video version of one that currently sits on my blog at uh, blog.tjphilly.com. Uh, so check it out, it's my first post, so this is going to be uh, the video version of it. Alright, now right here uh, we're in Illustrator CS4 and uh, we have some shapes here, some complex shapes made primarily using the tools um, found here in the Pathfinder. Okay, so this is uh, an immensely powerful tool set. So today we're just going to look at a few of the uses and just how really, really quickly you can actually create some pretty complex shapes and uh, get some pretty, pretty cool results. And um, and uh, there are some pretty cool applications for them as well. I like to throw them into Cinema 4D and um, create some renders with them um, because I think that uh, the integration of Illustrator and Cinema uh, can create some pretty powerful graphics and I'll continue to look at that as I uh, start to do more tutorials and blog posts. So let's jump right in and um, I'll show you how it's we do this. Okay, so we're going to create a new document. Um, I'm just going to make it square for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make that kind of cool little wrench guy we had there. So I'm just going to take the rectangle tool and uh, just draw a basic rectangle. I'm going to give it a fill uh, because I'm just in the habit of doing that um, to help differentiate between shapes when you're doing stuff like this. So I'm going to take the Add Anchor Point tool and uh, let's zoom in here. And um, I'm going to just create an anchor point. And then I'm going to select that anchor point. Just drag it over until right there you see it snaps uh, with the center because this is what we're going to do, but I'm going to actually hold shift um, to constrain it to just the horizontal uh, axis when you're sliding it. And now I'm going to select that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit by uh, using control alt space. That's a really helpful tool I use always to zoom out. Um, so I'm just going to drag this kind of down um, and, and you'll see how we're going to use this. So then I'm going to grab my uh, ellipse tool. So I'm just going to take a green and I'm just going to kind of draw out uh, an ellipse. Okay, actually turn off the stroke. And I'm just going to slide it up. And then I'm going to hit Arrange, Send to Back. And now you might be able to see kind of where I'm going with this. Um, and I'm basically going to align it up so we can see where the head of the wrench is going to be. So now I'm going to select both and hit the minus front option in the tool uh, in the Pathfinder tool panel. So if you, you can see we just created the head of the wrench really quickly and now I'm going to create uh, the handle. So if you look at the options on my rounded rectangle tool which I just selected, uh, my corner radius is 30 pixels. Alright, so that's just going to create um, okay, so I'm just going to draw, drag it out kind of create what I want, line it up nicely, select both, click my align panel, and uh, horizontal distribute the center, we're good. And now I'm going to select both of them, go back to my pathfinder, and hit this, the unite uh, option. So now look, in a matter of seconds we have kind of just a basic looking wrench, and um, it's pretty similar to the other one. The other one, the uh, part that's cut out is a little bit wider. Um, but now I'll show you how I made that cog wheel, which is actually um, what the tutorial on my blog is about, which you can go check out for a little bit more details about it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to select my star tool, um, and that's going to be the base of my cog wheel. Now, uh, I'm going to just click in my artboard, and now I have lots of options for my star. So I'm going to hit 20 for the points and my radius is going to be 200 and 240 with 20 points alright so this is the base of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to select a new fill color just to uh, kind of set it apart there alright so <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is now I have my star. It's going to be the base of our cog wheel. You might be thinking, how is that going to turn into a cog wheel? But just trust me. So now we're going to take our ellipse, our ellipse tool. I'm going to select the new fill color. And I'm going to put it here until it kind of snaps to the center there, if you can see that. 
and I'm going to start to draw. I'm going to hold Alt to go from the center and hold Shift to make it proportional. I'm just going to kind of drag out till I can kind of see where I'm going to cut off the tips of the star to make my cogwheel. Alright, so now we have that over top of that. I'm actually going to turn off our stroke. And I'm going to I'm going to right click my yellow ellipse and send it to the back. So now I drew it over top of now I drew it over top of it. And I'm just going to select both. And I'm going to hit the option that says intersect. Okay, so what's that what that's going to do? is then it's just going to kind of snip off the tips of that wherever that circle is it's going to intersect those two and um, we can go into detail more about actually what these pathfinder options do in terms of calculations but that I'll probably show that later in a later tutorial so I'm just going to uh, take my lips tool again select a new oh no so I'm going to select a new fill color of red and once again I'm going to drag out uh, an ellipse until it snaps to the center I'm going to click alt to do from the center shift to make it proportional and I'm just going to kind of leave it there in the center there we're nice we're aligned and uh, I'm just going to select it and I'm going to hit the option that says minus front I'm just going to chop out a nice little hole in our cog wheel so I'm going to actually make it like a blue so you can it's a little more noticeable okay so now we have a nice little cog wheel and wrench and uh, I don't really know what you can do with this. You can pop it into cinema and make some, uh, use it as a 3D object, or uh, you could have some sort of secret society logo now with this wrench and cogwheel. So the next thing um, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, is the uh, arrow I made here, this guy. Okay, so it's the same um, basic principles as before. The first thing we're going to do is create uh, this little tail part of it that we can see right here. And I'm actually going to do this using uh, ellipses. So uh, I've pink for my foreground color now, and I'm just going to draw out kind of just a, a, an oval. And, um, and now I'm going to uh, edit, copy, uh, paste in front, and now I'm going to select um, just uh, different color for the foreground um, and I'm going to scale it down uh, the same way but I'm gonna actually mess up the proportions a little bit here by grabbing my direct selection selecting this point and dragging out here because we're gonna actually cut off um, that portion of it you're because remember we're making the tail of that arrow and now I'm actually gonna drag this side in to make it get a little bit wider as it goes around now I'm going to hit my selection tool, select both objects, and use the same minus front object we had, uh, option we had used before. So now we kind of have a cool uh, shape going on here. You could use in a logo or something, but remember we're creating the tail. So I'm actually going to um, just use the eraser tool just to get rid of some of that excess geometry we have there. And um, so now we have the beginnings of our tail. Uh, of our arrow. If you look back at it, it's kind of similar. So now I'm going to select. Um, I'm going to select this and kind of move it, rotate it just a little bit. And now I'm going to take my rectangle tool and just kind of draw out uh, a rectangle. This is what we're going to use to uh, make the second part of the arrow. I'm going to take my direct selection tool, select the two. Uh, topmost points, grab my scale tool, and now I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. So it's kind of starting to bow out um, just a little bit. And now I'm going to kind of rotate it. And what I want to do is kind of line up these corners nicely. Um, so I'm actually going to, I'm going to erase this tip here. Um, and then I'm going to erase this side of the uh, rectangle so that we have just a better looking um, shape. All right, so now if you zoom out, you can kind of see what's happening. Got that little curvy guy going on. And now we're going to draw another rectangle out similar to before. And we're just going to rotate it 
into place and then what we're going to do is take the direct selection just like before select those top two points and scale them out just a little bit to make it continue to kind of bow out and we're just going to slide it up to the top make sure we're aligned nicely and then now all we have to do is create the arrowhead and we kind of have that cool looking arrow and actually how I'm going to do this is by selecting my star tool and if you click in here and if you set the points to three uh, that's how we're gonna create this star so um, now we've set the options and we're just gonna kind of draw it out and we get a really nice clean triangle here and I'm gonna take it and just rotate it into place and just kind of even it up just a little bit and now we have all the elements together those four elements and I'm just going to quickly select all four of them and um, hit the unite command just with that little squiggly in the back and you can use this to point to stuff in your designs all sorts of things you can extrude it um, right here 3D extrude or you can do it in like Cinema 4D or any other 3D application um, so yeah you can use that for a lot of different things uh, it's kinda similar to this one I kinda like this one better I think it just looks a little bit better uh, I know you're probably thinking what is the actual application of this and I think you can kinda use it in some designs or create some kinda cool stuff uh, one of the things I just wanted to quickly show was this um, it's just some renders in Cinema using that cogwheel I actually created um, in Illustrator. Uh, I brought that into Cinema and um, just some different stuff I did with this. I think it's kind of cool. Um, these are the pictures you'll see in the blog post. Some of the just different renders I did. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, hope you enjoyed today's post. I hope you can use um, something in here for something useful in one of your designs or whatever. Uh, continue to tune in. Uh, look at the blog. Check out podcast when it's up. Um, yep, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.